Time for this week's 10-minute war, our homage to the legendary 10-year war between Woody and Bo with our good friend Mark Rogers and Ohio State fan. Good to have you back with us, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well, Steve, uh, considering the circumstances as a football fan, but uh, we will hope for the best. So late last week, I reported for Wolverine Digest, part of the Sports Illustrated Network, from a very good source that University of Michigan President Mark Schlissel was really the singular figure standing in the way of Big Ten football uh, returning, essentially organizing a faction of presidents to remain resolved not to let it return. Um, now, keep in mind, he is an immunologist, so he has some expertise here. Yet, on the other hand, he has not used that expertise to reveal a single specific reason as to why he is concerned other than there's a pandemic raging. Well, not so much concerned about that pandemic raging that they don't have about half the student body population back on campus in Ann Arbor as we speak, right? So we're going to need a little bit more than that, especially as we watch Central Arkansas pull off not one but two games. Texas State can play. But Michigan, with maybe the best med school at a public university on this continent, seemingly cannot. Neither can the Big Ten, with a lot of very well-respected uh, medical schools. So that story went viral. I did an interview on Sirius XM. Dan Patrick, uh, on his show, had a story similar today, saying it wasn't just Michigan, but several other school presidents were adamant that uh, those teams were not going to return in October. Now, this is a big week, Mark with two Power Five conferences opening up in the Big 12 and the and the ACC. Uh, the ACC just put out a statement five minutes ago, right before we taped this, saying, hey, we're confident from our medical advisory team. We're full speed ahead to play this fall. Uh, we have the NFL opening up, and then Saturday is when that discovery deadline must be honored at that Nebraska County Court by the Big Ten. So what do you think, Mark? Where are we right now? I heard a conversation between Rich Eisen on his show this afternoon and Larry Scott, the commissioner of the big, the Pac-12, and uh, very much leaning on their alliance with the Big Ten and citing the Big Ten and its decision to side with the health and safety of the athletes as the reason why those two conferences are optimistic about playing football someday and think that that's um, a goal in mind, but at the same time, not today because of the health and safety of the athlete. And that's that's the, the crutch that's, that's given. I think that we have the biggest disconnect in the Big Ten of the five major conferences. And that's what's at war here. That's what's waging. You have the majority that wants to play football and sees no reasonable reason not to play football. But we have the people in power, the president's and of course the commissioner and the chancellors who don't believe we should be playing football for whatever reason is the underlying true reason in all this, whether it be political or litigious. And we just have this major gap and we're seeing it play out in the Big Ten unlike any other conference where the ACC, the SEC and the Big 12, I'm sure have some dissenting views in pockets, but they're very small and they're silenced. Therefore, they're full steam ahead and they're unified. The Pac-12 is going the direction it's going, and there has barely been a murmur or a peep from anyone. Yeah, they don't. They don't care. They, they don't care out there. They're fine they if they never play again until, they until there's care. a vaccine we may never they have. Yeah, they've made that clear. Yeah. yeah, it's not enough of a fervent fan base to matter. Right. The Big Ten, man, this disconnect I think is going to scar relationships within the conference. And I don't know how that's going to manifest itself, but we're going to see it for years to come. And uh, I think we're going to get into Jim Harbaugh's uh, most recent statement in protest with uh, the fans and the players on campus. Uh, but it did my soul and my heart good to see Jim Harbaugh because I think he's warring within himself to be the good soldier of the conference and the university with being a fervent, passionate football coach that sees uh, his players and their rights being violated and wants to go the American way and fight this. Well, let's go there next. An extraordinary scene on Saturday as Coach Harbaugh did join a couple of hundred of his current players, their families, uh, and some of his coaches. There was a lot of talk. Would he show up? Would he not? Because after he put out his initial statement dur during the whole are we going to play debate in early August, he's been pretty quiet. But as we pointed out here a little while ago, he did show up on Saturday at the protest 
didn't hold anything back, talked about the fact he has not been able to have a single conversation with his university president about this decision. A university president, by the way, that the entire time that the team has been practicing in Ann Arbor since June, never bothered to visit the facility once to check on the protocols, the safety of the student athletes, not a single time. And I cannot think of another blue blood program, uh, you know, a Texas, a Notre Dame, an Ohio State, a USC, an Alabama. I, I can't think of another blue blood program where a president would dare think he could cancel a season without coming and even addressing the players and the coaches individually one time. Yet here we are at the University of Michigan. Mark, what are your views on this looking at it from the outside as an Ohio State guy? And this is not just a coach. This is not just a coach who just stepped on campus. Obviously, to acquire that type of job, you've got to be a really good coach, but you could have not much investment in the university. This is about as much of an investment in a head coach, both financially, from an equity standpoint, from the standpoint of him being a native son, him being a Michigan fan and a Michigan man, since the mid 1980s you know there there is not a personality in college football that is more tied to a university as a head coach in regards to being player native son uh, i know that he didn't grow up in michigan but of course a disciple of Bo and very connected to the lineage of michigan football and now as its head coach and one of the most highest uh, uh, one of the most high paid uh, coaches in the country so i'm 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 seeing i think uh, Jim Harbaugh's, again, what the war that's being waged inside of him is he was raised and grew up in a system in which you are loyal, you take your orders, you follow your orders, you execute. And so he has, I believe, been silent as long as he can possibly be silent, hoping for the best, wanting the best, that, that, that the, the facts would weigh out, that the facts would sway the minds to finally make the right and then seeing everybody else in the groundswell of support to play, hopefully going to make a determination and put enough pressure and heat on the commissioner and the presidents to say enough's enough. OK, we're going to play football and then make whatever PR play that they needed to make in regards to spinning it in their favor. Uh, but he probably just got to a point where, you know, I, I'm not seeing this happen and time is running out. Time is ticking. And I've got to make a move. I've got to be bold. I've got to stand up for this because it's what's right. And if anything, I don't necessarily represent this university as much as I represent my own team and these players. You mentioned the name Larry Scott, the Pac-12 commissioner. He has been making the media rounds here the past few days. And I don't think it's a coincidence, Mark, that he began to reemerge in the media as we were, you and I were sitting here a week ago Wednesday and taping and all of the stories and rumors about a Big Ten revote looming Thursday, Friday at the weekend. I don't think it's any... The president's tweets. The president tweeted about this again on Sunday. I don't think it's any coincidence that Larry Scott reemerged in the media around the time that speculation on the Big Ten going back on its previous uh, decision not to play and rescinding that. I don't think it's any coincidence it coincided with that timing. I think he is fearful that his league's going to be isolated um, and is already behind the eight ball on every other front competitively anyway, this would this would just be an anvil uh, on the branding of their league. And I think that he has purposefully been in the media everywhere he can go for the last few days trying to send a signal to these Big Ten presidents, hey, hold out against the, the, the blowback, the backlash a little bit longer. We've got it. He, he mentioned in one of the interviews, they've got a full time testing metric that's going to be in place by the end of this month, the 1st of October. And I think he is sending a signal to the Big Ten that, hey, if you guys are this divided on this, we're, we're still your dancing partner. You can still play this fall. Hold out. We can probably go early to mid November. Yeah, that'll be too late for the playoff, but we can play a traditional Big Ten, Pac-12 season, end it with a Rose Bowl in mid to late January or something, and still have some kind of a meaningful season, and we can just play something unified together. I think he is specifically messaging those hesitant Big Ten presidents that don't want to play this fall and trying to offer them some sort of compromise solution uh, in order to appease the growing dissent within the league. Your thoughts on that? 
So everything you just stated, Steve, is evident and it's obvious. And that's what Larry Scott has done. And it makes sense from his standpoint to make himself and his conference look better and put them in a good position to where they're aligning with uh, another prominent com conference or the second or first most prominent conference. That all makes sense from his standpoint. So I'm not concerned with what Larry Scott's doing because it makes sense, again, to preserve his reputation and his brand in the Pac-12. What I'm concerned is what the Big Ten is doing in aligning with the Pac-12. I don't understand that in any such way. As you just mentioned, the Pac-12 in every way, shape, and form has made missteps on the athletic front and the football only front for six or seven years. And the, uh, the brand has been in decline ever since. They share a Rose Bowl. They share that agreement. But over the years, for some reason, the Big Ten has, has um, I, and, I, and I believe that they share academic philosophies as institutions and as, as a whole. But for the Big Ten to be in bed with the Pac-12 makes absolutely no sense from any other standpoint. And so my concern is with the Big Ten aligning itself with the Pac-12. Well, I, I can see, knowing how politics works, because that's where I work full-time, and university presidents are political animals. I, I could see where they decide this is the way to avoid a scorched earth civil war in the league, save some face, they delay the season, and say they, they made sure all their protocols were in place, they learned from these other leagues that had to cancel some games, and then they save some face that they still played in the fall, they didn't make the players play two seasons in one calendar year, because that talking point is being used against them as well, which is, hey, you care so much about player safety, you're going to play two seasons in one calendar year and put all that wear and tear on their bodies, that this is a this is like the political, uh, the college football version of, a, of an omnibus bill. Everybody gets a little bit of what they want, and yet nobody is satisfied at the exact same time. Because that solution, and I, by the way, I want to make this very clear. I don't agree with this as a solution, okay? I, the Michigan fan here doesn't... I have, as Mark knows, and many of you know, I have leveraged every platform I have, every relationship I have, not just in this league, but in other conferences, by the way, to do everything I can for there to be a college football season this fall, okay? So this is not the Steve Dace approved plan. The Steve Dace approved plan was, we're already playing. That's the Steve Dace approved plan, okay? This is not an endorsement, an observation. When you look at the pressure to play by October 10th and 17th, so that you can play enough games to put together a viable playoff resume, the reality is there's only one school in our league that that is... Going into this season, a, a, a major consideration for. Maybe it was for Penn State until Micah Parsons, who's basically their entire defense, decided to go to the NFL. Michigan was already going to have to replace a lot of players. This was kind of looking like a cycle up season to get ready for next year where your roster is more prepared to make uh, a, you know, a run with a, with a more experienced quarterback. We already had to replace almost our entire offensive line, a new quarterback. Now two of our best players, Jalen Mayfield and Ambry Thomas, are gone. You look at the rest of our league, there's a lot of good teams, but there was only one team in our league we all agreed was set up for a run this year, and it's your team, the Buckeyes. I, I think this becomes now a battle of how much clout do you guys have within the league? Because I could see the rest of these teams saying, we weren't going to be a playoff team anyway. You know, so we'll just start the 1st of November, play our season out, and play with the Pac-12. And I think this may now become a battle of how much clout does Ohio State wield internally within the league? How many people can they get to ride side saddle with them to force this issue because the reality is they're the only team that really loses out here if the Big Ten isn't uh, isn't associated with the Heisman Trophy or the college football playoff this year. What are your thoughts on that, Mark? But Steve, as uh, you and I addressed last week, they have to understand what a joke of a season it would be to start on Thanksgiving I agree. weekend. I agree. For as much as it would be a joke to start in January after the college football playoff, at least it's isolated. And for those people that are football starved and want to see it 365 days a year, at least, hey, we're playing all by ourselves, either as the Big Ten or 
in concert with the Pac-12, and we're going to have a Rose Bowl and some type of championship event. And that would be made fun of and would be a laughing stock and a joke to a certain extent. But at least it's football that's not competing against football uh, that's concluding with the national championship that's recognized. It's almost like minor league baseball competing with a major league uh, baseball season that, uh, yeah, if the if the baseball's in your town and you can go for five bucks down the street and watch a baseball game, great, uh, uh, because our, our team's not playing tonight on TV, uh, where it's just a filler. It's, it's, it's not significant. It's not meaningful. And it actually magnifies the decision and how pitiful it is and pathetic uh, to be playing at that time. So I just can't imagine that uh, the the presidents are that ignorant, but maybe I can based on how all this has played out since the end of July. Yeah, um, I would have never guessed there as tone deaf to have put us in the position we're in right now. And yet here we are, right? And so if you're tone deaf enough to put us in the position we're in right now, Mark, why aren't you tone deaf enough to think that what I just offered up, which I agree with you, is a terrible idea? All right. To me, I think you either try to make sure you play in, in, in time for the playoff or then you wait until after the first of the year and create this as a special event for you rather than announce yourself as the as the opening act B team for the real season. Right. As you pointed out here last week. But if they were tone deaf enough to put us in this position, why wouldn't they be tone deaf enough, Mark, to think that this would actually be a good idea? And if the Big Ten's as, as aligned with the Pac-12 as they might be, and as Larry Scott would like a uh, college football nation to think, then they won't be playing in November. They will wait until January so they can align the seasons and have some type of Rose Bowl agreement that continues. And, and we at least have that tradition to hold on to. But uh, the rest of it's just a, a B season, even with the Pac-12 involved, because of the lack of respect given that league and uh, the championship will have already been played. Final fi final question. Our comments section here, I've not really addressed it a little bit, but not quite on, is, is littered with comments about how this is being politicized. Okay? Final question to you. Do you believe, I mean, I mean listen, man, I, I will take help from Cucky McCuckface if it gets me Michigan running out of the tunnel on a Saturday afternoon here in the fall. Know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't care if Joe Biden wants to help. I don't care if Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, Mike Pence, Nancy Pelosi, yo mama. I don't care. Somebody wants to help us get our Big Ten football back. That's all I care about. But are we at the point now, do you think, where Trump involving himself is helping us or hurting us? Meaning, could there be a group of people that just so despise him that they just don't want to make it look like he gets a big win by putting the Big Ten back on the field? So screw him. We're going, to, he's, he's, we're going to set out even more. There's a lot of people in our comment section that think that this is what's going on. What does Mark Rogers think? Did Donald Trump contact the Big Ten and not the Pac-12 because there are swing states involved? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It would not surprise me if that was the case. But the Pac-12, there's been no fight. There's been no pushback. There's been no reason for Donald Trump to intervene over there. Their situation has been... This is what we're doing, and there's not been a peep of protest. Okay, the Big Ten is a battleground, and Donald Trump uh, recognizes that both for himself and for the league and playing football and the, the gap that's there. So it only makes sense. So it could be debated either way from, from his own personal standpoint. I can't imagine that if the Big Ten presidents have pushed this far in the face of reasonable thought and conclusion and deduction of all the medical points that we've gone through a number of times, if they've thought it that um, ardently, I don't think they need the incentive of pushing back mm. against Donald Trump. If anything, I, I think that he would have some sway and some pull uh, in the opposite direction to, to actually push football into play. Uh, I think what we're seeing now is that it's a standoff and he's – He's made some kind of push, but it's not enough. Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby was asked about this yesterday, actually, and he said college football is so popular and, and across the board, universally, that any no one would benefit politically by being seen as stopping it from coming uh, from coming in, uh, you know, onto your television screen for the games being uh, played. I thought that was an excellent point. Mark, good to see you as always. Thanks for joining us here on the 10-Minute War. 
Thanks so much, Steve, for the opportunity. You bet.